The British journalist Rupert Hamer has become the first British journalist to be killed in Afghanistan. The Sunday Mirror defense correspondent was embedded with the U.S. Marines when he died. He was 39 years old and was married with three children. His cameraman suffered serious leg injuries in the attack. Oscar's defense correspondent Jeff Mead knew Rupert Hamer from his time in Afghanistan and he joins us on the phone. And Jeff, you worked alongside him, by all accounts, a brave and very professional man. Of course, and uh, our thoughts, all our thoughts, of course, are with his widow, Helen, and their three young children. Um, I was with Rupert as recently as December, um, a month or so ago, uh, out in Afghanistan. Um, his thoughts were obviously with the, the, the job that we were there to do, but he was looking forward to being home for Christmas and spending Christmas uh, with his family. He was able to do that gladly. Um, but I think it's a mark of the professionalism of the man that he wanted to get back to Afghanistan, back to the story uh, as soon as he, he could. And at New Year, um, he, uh, he flew out again to uh, uh, join uh, the U.S. Marines uh, as an embedded uh, journalist with them. And it was sadly in that role yesterday morning that he met his death. Um, what we know about that, the circumstance were that he was uh, traveling in an armored convoy uh, near a, a, a place called Nawa. Uh, this convoy then uh, came under attack from uh, ro at least one roadside bomb. Um, that uh, severely damaged the uh, protected vehicle that Rupert and others were traveling in. Uh, in fact, uh, he was one of three people killed in that attack, a, a U.S. Marine and an Afghan army soldier also died, and there were five uh, seriously injured, including, of course, Phil Coburn, uh, Rupert's uh, photographer, who he'd worked with uh, regularly and over many years. Um, what can I tell you about the man? Um, he was, you know, a, a, a welcome member of the, the family of defense correspondents. You always knew uh, when Rupert was, uh, was uh, on an assignment with you, uh, but not only was he going to be a very hard uh, correspondent to keep up with, he was remorseless in his search for the story, but also at the end of those very long, very arduous days, um, he would be great company. He had a wicked sense of humor and was really uh, a, a great antidote to, letting off, to, to, to allow you to let off steam after what could be uh, risky and frustrating times. Um, Phil Coburn also, they were a perfect pair. Phil um, uh, and Ulsterman shared Rupert's uh, uh, dark sense of humor, uh, and they were really um, good people to be with. Uh, we will miss Rupert sorely, and, of course, we wish Phil uh, a, a speedy and, and, full, uh, and as full a recovery as possible. Well, Sky's senior correspondent David Bowden is here, and David, you've, of course, reported from Afghanistan many times. How, how scary is it going out on these kind of patrols? with the military, you know what risks there are out there, and you're very much a target. I don't think you personally are a target, but you go as an embed with the military, and they clearly are a target. And we've seen over the last month, certainly, that more and more of these roadside bombs are being used as the weapon of choice, and they are completely random. The Taliban, whoever set this bomb, had no idea there was a British journalist in it and his photographer, they just knew this was a military convoy and somebody was going to get it. Of course, there was a U.S. Marine killed in this and an Afghan soldier as well. But I think the, the, the staggering thing is, and it's a horrible thing to have to say, that I'm amazed, and we're all amazed, I think, who go to these places, that this is the first British journalist to have died or to get seriously injured out there. It, it's a staggeringly dangerous place, and I think people um, probably don't appreciate that even for hardened soldiers, they know they've got a job to do. If there's a firefight, you shoot at somebody, they shoot at you, well, may the best man win. But what really gets to, uh, to the soldiers, the Marines, both British and other nations out there, is that there is no way of knowing where these IEDs are and whether your number's going to be up. You talk about it being astonishing that no British journalists have died, and, and you're right, they haven't, but 17 other journalists have died. The latest, a Canadian, Michelle Lang, she died on New Year's Eve. So journalists from other parts of the world have, have perished out there. And as you were saying just a short while ago, that the problem is for journalists that there isn't another way to cover the conflict out there, is there, apart from going with the military? No, I mean, if, if, if you're in Kabul or, or somewhere like that, or Masri -e Sharif, then maybe you can just go and you can do your own work as, as a unilateral, as we call it. But down in the south, in Helmand province, you can't. You know, you cannot wander around as a, as a white sort of European reporter and expect 
to come out in one piece. It's just so dangerous. There are so many places you can get into trouble. The only way you can cover this particular part of this particular conflict is to go there with the military. And of course that brings with it security in the form of the military, but it also brings with it a big target on your back, as, as Rupert Hamer uh, and his photographer have found out. And everybody who goes there and everybody who sends them knows that this is a dangerous job to do. But you have to put it to one side and say, look, this is what I signed up for. This is what I chose to do uh, for my living. I didn't know Rupert Hamer, but I know lots of people who've been there. And I know, as Jeff has said before, that he went there with his eyes open and, you know, he leaves a young family. And it's dreadful. I've got children. But he knew what he was doing. And I think his partner, his family, his friends will know when the shock of this dies away, that he died, it's a euphemism, but it's true, he died doing what he wanted to do, and he was doing it in the only place to do it.